to bring in Anthony Malkin, Tony Malkin, a prominent New York Democrat and also president of Malkin Properties, the New York real estate investment firm uh, that is arguably best known for the Empire State Building. And Tony, uh, great to have you with us uh, on this historic day or post a day. Um, okay, you've contributed a lot to the Democrats. How do you feel today? Well, first of all, I'd like to give a shout out to my sister, Cynthia Blumenthal, for her successful operation of my brother-in-law Dick's campaign. We have Richard a new senator Blumenthal. in the family. We're yep. very happy about that. Okay, all right. So let's get that out of the way. <laughs> that, out of the, that out of the way, an interesting day. Actually, it was a very interesting race for, for him. It was, it was a very interesting race. As he said, it, it turned out to be an election rather than an auction, so we're pleased for him. Okay, all right. Uh, overall, I think uh, I don't think anybody really voted for people as much as they voted against. So uh, my view is that it was uh, that the Democrats lost, not not that the Republicans Democrats won. Democrats lost, uh, and the Republicans won some. But you have this now triangulation with the Tea Party movement. I think that it's going to be very, very misguided for the Republicans to think they're going to file under the wing. So we no longer have polarization, in my view. We have triangulation. Triangulation. Wait, explain that to me. We, we have a new group of people who don't believe in the Republican activities. They don't believe in the Democrat activities. They believe in their own. And it may, in fact, be the item which absolutely contorts us or provides for a mediation. But don't you think that they've been a catalyst for, pain, you know, for, for, for getting Americans to face the pain? Don't you think that? I, I think the surprising thing about the Tea Party movement is that generally well-off, or at least formerly well-off, middle and upper middle class Americans, generally white, are the ones who prompted the revolution, and not the 48 percent of Americans who don't pay taxes and who are gen generally gradually being disenfranchised from our economy and our society. Well, you, you could have said, though, that they, that that segment of the population did have their voice heard two years ago when they elected President, President Barack Obama. I, I, look at, I voted for Obama, and I'm very disappointed with how things have gone under him. Uh, but I would say a little differently. I, I really think that uh, there was a much more broad coalition that voted for Obama than just the 48 percent of disenfranchised. Sure, but, but, but what I'm saying is that their voice was heard Absolutely. as well, right? Absolutely. They weren't heard as loud this time around. It was. As I don't think they showed up. Interesting to see the exit polls to see who voted. And what does that tell you? Uh, that, if they didn't show up, what does that tell you? Uh, I think that there was not a motivation there for them to show up. Uh, I think they weren't excited. They weren't engaged. Okay, so what do we do from here? Uh, I think we've got to get down to bottom line accountability in Washington. We've got to start looking at policy, which is oriented around a bottom line. We've got to bring business people into the White House. We've got to bring business people into policy making. We can't have an environment. Well, what have you been disappointed in? You know, the, business the thing I'm most familiar with is energy efficiency in the existing built environment. And in spite of all of the Obama administration's comments and arguments for energy efficiency and to decrease energy consumption, I think what they've really done best is give conferences. There's no one with an ability to execute at a business level. The work we've done at the Empire State Building and with the Clinton Climate Initiative, Johnson Controls, Jones Lang LaSalle and the Rocky Mountain Institute has created a transparent, replicable process for it economically justified investment, reinvestment in existing buildings. Short-term payback, three years in our case, 40% reduction in Watt and BTU consumption. Right. You can't catch anybody's ear in Washington, D.C., outside of the Hill on this matter. There's okay. no one in the White House who will return a phone call. Oh, but and, okay, and we'll talk a little, a little bit about it because we've got to take a commercial break, but that kind of drives to a larger point, which Absolutely. is that businesses feel like on all these issues, they have not been heard because the White House has been not focused. We, we're right? not They've only, been focused only, on the wrong thing. Not only haven't we been heard, we've been beaten up. Uh, we're back now with Tony Malk, and he's the president of Malk and Properties and also the former NYC chairman, Dick Grasso, who's been with us uh, for the last hour and a half. And, um, you know, Melissa raises a good point because that was something, the Supreme Court decision was a huge influence in this election this time around, right? I mean, would it have been as bad if, it hadn't, if, that, if that judgment had not been made? As bad as in how much money was spent? Well, yeah, I mean, we had special interest groups funneling money into candidates, and you didn't know where they were coming from. Uh, you know, I mean, it was, it was bad. With appropriate disclosure, you know, freedom of speech is freedom of speech. If that's the rule, then people from both sides can express their opinions. Right. Well, I, I, I agree with Tony. I think that uh, the, the problem a lot of people have with the enormous amounts spent is that a lot of it was non-disclosed. The resources were non-disclosed. Look, the, the reality is you've had union money going into elections. It's been transparent. Right. I think what a lot of people have said is the Supreme Court decision creates a cloud or a veil yes. over lots of contributions, and that veil needs to be lifted in the eyes of the American people. Okay, that veil 
veil. That veil has been clouding investors. I mean, we're not talking about, now I'm not talking about the Supreme Court, I'm talking about just this overall veil about what's, where the economy's headed. Dick, you were saying earlier that you think that the stock markets are actually underperforming the economy. So looking forward, what do we need to see out of Washington to give investors that clarity? We need to see an approach that says we get it, okay? The people have sent us the message that we want public policy to work to create growth and jobs, to straighten out the problems in the housing business. You know, the, the two GSEs that are sitting out there represent a $500 billion hole in the federal budget that we haven't brought on the balance sheet. Right. Now, think about it in the context of Dodd-Frank. Dodd-Frank says to the financial community, we want everything disclosed, we want no special purpose entities, we want everything on the balance sheet, and yet the government itself has a half a trillion dollar hole that's off balance sheet. That's nonsensical. I, I, I agree. I think it goes back to the earlier comments. It's got to be bottom line oriented. Dick mentions the, the issue with the, the GSEs. There's also the fact that the pension fund liabilities of the United States states and municipalities are totally underfunded, let alone Social Security. And they're underfunded on the basis of lies about the returns that the funds which are invested will achieve. But, but Tony, how does that cloud then your ability to run your business? You have to know for what reason you're saving money and you have to know for what reason you're spending money. And it doesn't make sense to invest when you don't know what your expenses are going to be and when you don't know how the economy is going to perform based on when government is going to face up to the issues, bottom line issues of running the country. So does that mean that you are prevented or you feel prevented from doing things because you don't know? There's an immense amount of cash lying on the sidelines because people want to protect themselves once they know but what's going on. is that you? Is that you too? But, you know, we're a private business. We have more cash as a family on hand than we've ever had in, in my professional career, 22 years. We'll put that money to work when we know what's going on. Well, look at, look at just the financial markets and the enormous amount of cash yes. that's un, undeployed. Plus. Exactly right. And what that, a lot of that money would normally be going into equities if there was some certainty as to economic performance, which translates into market right, Or performance. going out of the bond markets, right, and going into well, the equity I mean, markets. Bond possibly, market, yes. long bonds at 2.5%. Yeah. I mean, you get, you get not great getting common stocks yielding 3%. Okay. All right, Tony, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it.